from the UK. Uh, sorry about these technical uh, hiccups. One of the criticisms people have of, uh, of uh, transhumanist technologies is, well, couldn't everything go wrong? And it's uh, a very good rule of thumb. Anything that can go wrong will, will, will go wrong. Um, yeah, essentially, um, I wanted just to, you know, essentially to talk a little bit about today um, about um, paradise uh, engineering and the idea that it is going to be possible uh, to genetically reprogram the biosphere uh, and how, thanks to modern technology, the level of suffering in the living world is essentially an adjustable parameter. And uh, the question really I want to uh, ask um, is, I'm not going to engage in a theological debate or discussion. I, essentially, I'm going to ask what level of suffering in the living world would a benevolent God or super intelligence uh, or simulator, if you take the simulation argument seriously, what level of suffering uh, would uh, a benevolent overlord want us to choose for his creatures? Uh, and uh, as my text, I really wanted to start uh, uh, with the, the peaceable kingdom of Isaiah. If you could just scroll to the next slide, I think it is. Um, yeah, um, it's worth, uh, I mean, the wolf shall live with the lamb, uh, the leopard shall lie down with the kid, the calf and the lion and the fatling together, and the little child shall lead them. The cow and the bear shall graze, the young shall lie down together, and the lion shall eat straw like the ox. So it's a very, very ancient uh, vision, uh, in a sense, uh, a world uh, without cruelty and suffering. Uh, um, since time immemorial, uh, some people have dreamed this kind of utopian vision of a peaceable kingdom, but on the surface, at any rate, naively, this is completely uh, ecologically uh, uh, illiterate because, uh, yes, as, uh, as mainstream evolutionary biologists like Richard Dawkins would tell us, essentially, uh, yes, the idea of sentient beings living in harmony with, with each other, not starving or predating each other, uh, it's biologically illiterate. I mean, yeah, literally to quote uh, Richard Dawkins, it must be so. Um, and essentially, a lot of my work over the past 20 years uh, or so, 25 years, has been showing how technically, at least, it needn't uh, be so. And uh, outlining uh, technological proposals such that if we agree that it is good to phase out all forms of involuntary pain and suffering, not merely uh, in humans, but also uh, the rest of the living world, uh, it's possible to do so. Uh, and indeed, yeah, it's possible even to sketch out a uh, uh, hundred, uh, technically at least a uh, hundred year plan to make this so. Um, now, I wasn't uh, today going to go over uh, in, uh, in, in detail some of these proposals, but anyone uh, interested who, who, who wants to uh, uh, click through the, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the slide, the PDF, through some more uh, technical uh, uh, information about uh, what, what is involved. Um, but yeah, well, essentially I wanted to have a discussion uh, with, 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 with people today as to whether you think this is a desirable uh, a, a goal uh, to get rid of all forms of involuntary suffering. Um, I will just say just a very a, a little bit about uh, the, te the, the technology, otherwise people would What would actually be involved in getting involved in involuntary pain and suffering? Um, what most people would perhaps find uh, most uh, troubling or disturbing is the idea that the human uh, germline is uh, programmable. Um, 
and uh, the level and uh, for example pain sensitivity uh, uh, there are lots of genes involved in pain sensitive pain sensitivity but one the SDN 9a gene has been called a so-called volume knob for pain and nonsense mutations uh, abolish the capacity to, to experience pain uh, altogether other mutation other mutations give an extremely high or low pain threshold um, and the question is should we continue to have children by a kind of genetic crapshoot or alternatively should we choose the level of pain sensitivity of our uh, future uh, 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 children and uh, yeah I mean hopefully everyone uh, listening is feeling comfortable one forgets just how ghastly pain can be but if you've ever met someone, some genetic outlier, the kind of person who says, hey, you know, it's just a useful signaling mechanism. It's possible to preserve functionality without the extremes of raw nastiness. Now, I gather from the, uh, the introduction, as I was asked to uh, say a little bit about uh, gradients of uh, bliss. Um, one possibility for the future, it's not one that I or transhumanist uh, canvas, is essentially just raw, indiscriminate bliss or happiness. So this would be the end of civilization, responsibility, intellectual insight. This is not what is uh, being proposed here. But it is also possible to choose approximately the hedonic set points of our future children and possibly uh, our future selves. What's a hedonic set point? Essentially, it's the default average level of well-being or ill-being that most people experience in the course of a lifetime. Um, one, of my, one of our transhumanist uh, colleagues, uh, Anders Sandberg, uh, when prompted, did once say, yes, I do have a ridiculously high hedonic set point. Um, and the idea of, of going of ratcheting up hedonic set points is that it doesn't involve choosing between conflicting uh, values and preferences. You can preserve your core values and preferences, and yet at the same time, your def default hedonic tone can, in principle, be shifted upwards. And tragically, so many people today who no fault of, of their own, have a very low hedonic uh, uh, set point. They suffer from chronic uh, depression and malaise. And we know uh, that uh, hedonic set point uh, has a high degree of genetic loading, and we are teasing out uh, neuroscience for particular genes involved. Two other, I mean, I'm, I'm shortly going to, I said, I, I promised I wouldn't go off on a, a very long technical spiel, um, but two other uh, key points that I want to, 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 to stress. Um, you may recall from uh, uh, Isaiah, can you see the next uh, slide, if that's okay? Uh, uh, he, Kenneth and Ox, is, is, uh, is as if he slew a man. Now, uh, Essentially, pigs, uh, cattle, sheep are as sentient as small children. And what perhaps the biggest source of severe and readily avoidable uh, suffering in the world today is factory farming and slaughterhouses. And if we want to make uh, the vision of uh, Isaiah come true, uh, of course, it's not just Isaiah, it's also vision of, uh, of Gautama Buddha. May all that have life be, be delivered from suffering. There are ways, ways to do that. Um, transhumanism isn't just about moralizing, it's about technical uh, uh, solutions to moral uh, problems. And uh, the advent of uh, cultured meat and meat substitutes means that, in principle, at any rate, it's possible to, in a sense, veganize uh, the world. Um, the, you know, the, uh, the terrible uh, plague that is just, about, just almost upon us now, essentially, if it weren't for meat-eating, zoonotic uh, disease like this would be uh, extremely infrequent. 
Um, and if we are prepared uh, to make the transition to uh, a, a vegan or a cultured meat lifestyle, we will uh, get rid of, as I said, one of the worst forms of severe and avoidable suffering in the world. But the final plank of the abolitionist project, i.e. Of, of getting rid of involuntary pain and suffering, is the suffering of, of, of free-living non-humans, uh, uh, sentient beings uh, that uh, are in many ways uh, akin uh, to, to infants and small toddlers. And uh, yeah, right now, sadly, that there are millions of sentient being, beings who are starving, uh, uh, millions that are living in terror, running for their lives, being uh, parasitized. Um, but the combination of uh, CRISPR genome editing and synthetic gene drives, and I can explain this uh, in the discussion if anyone is uh, uh, interested, uh, in principle at any rate, uh, allow us uh, to create a living world in which sentient beings do not harm each other. Um, the, the Bible, Isaiah, is actually uh, rather light on the technical details as to how, uh, uh, a lion, how the lion and the lamb can, can lie down together. Um, but nonetheless, with a bit of modest genetic tweaking, uh, with perhaps uh, catnip-laced in vitro meat in the meantime, uh, yes, it is possible uh, to show how existing predators uh, can be civilized. Um, now, one might think, well, if it, 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 intuitively, uh, if uh, predators were not uh, uh, harming and eating herbivore populations, then there would be an uncontrolled uh, population uh, explosion followed by ecological collapse. Um, but once again, if we decide we want to get rid of cruelty and suffering, as the prophets foretold, this is now feasible. One can use uh, cross-species fertility regulation via uh, immunocontraception. One can use tunable gene drives that cheat the supposedly immutable laws of Mendelian inheritance. Uh, essentially, every cubic meter of the planet is shortly going to be accessible to micromanagement and control. And uh, even the deep oceans uh, and, and Amazonia that are intuitively, how on earth could one uh, possibly hope to ensure uh, a happy civilized biosphere. Technically, these are uh, these are feasible options. We're not going to run out of uh, computational resources. Um, so, yeah, just wrapping up uh, this uh, uh, this introduction. If perhaps we can just scroll uh, down the, the slides. I'm afraid we're going to skim through a lot of uh, 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 stuff towards the end. Otherwise, I'll go on talking talking too long. Um, very last uh, 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 slide. Um, yeah, if you, if, uh, as, a, as, 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 okay. Um, I'm advancing. Uh, yeah, this is it. This is it. Uh, um, any, anyone who, who is, is still uh, interested, uh, yeah, essentially the, some of the uh, slides provide uh, hot links, uh, details, and I'm happy to uh, 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 provide more detail uh, at all. But the purpose of sketching out uh, uh, these kind of blueprints is that only once we know what is technically feasible can we start having uh, uh, an ethical debate. And for, for many people, I think the idea that, uh, yeah, that, that wild animal suffering is a problem uh, or that in somehow we are complicit in the suffering of, of non-humans, uh, yeah, it will be quite alien to them. Um, and yeah, we're just scrolling through uh, some slides now, which uh, say a bit more about uh, 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 synthetic gene drives um, and yeah, obligate predators. If I'm advancing too quickly, just let me know. No, this is fantastic because, as I said, although I could uh, happily talk for a long time, what I really wanted to do uh, is to uh, 
uh, yeah, take uh, questions, have a have a discussion uh, with um, yeah with members of the audience. Um, but uh, this, yeah, this is what I really wanted just to c c c conclude at. Um, yeah, the idea that it is actually possible to have a world without uh, involuntary suffering will strike most people as ecologically illiterate, that the, the Bible or Gautama Buddha just simply didn't know what they were talking about. Um, but, uh, what, uh, but this isn't the case if we are prepared to use technology. And as I said, although I, I uh, wasn't intending to uh, engage in, 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 in theology, I mean, this was the question I really want to, to ask is regardless of of someone's stance on, uh, yeah, the nature of reality and whether they believe in uh, God or or, or what not. Um, should we use uh, the new technologies, biotech, CRISPR, genome editing, and AI to reduce uh, or even uh, eliminate uh, involuntary suffering? Because in principle, it is possible to have a signaling system based entirely on information-sensitive gradients of well-being. And I'd stress the information-sensitive, i.e. one isn't asking people to give up uh, their, uh, their, their core values and preferences on the altar or on the altar of someone else's conception of the good life or, 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 or utopia. Um, Needless to say, yeah, all manner of things could go wrong. All manner of dilemmas are, are uh, uh, opened up by these new technologies. Um, but when someone says, as most people would do, there is no alternative to a world of pain and suffering, I think we are now entitled to say, well, yes, actually, there is an alternative. Excellent. Um, okay. at, at this stage, would you like to take some questions from the audience? Yes. Yeah, that, that will be great. Sorry if I've uh, uh, garbled or anything or I was flustered by the, uh, the technical challenges. <laughs> Actually, you're, uh, you're holding up quite well. Um, so what, because of the fact that you can't directly hear what people are saying, I will basically repeat the question that I hear coming from the audience, okay? Um, that would be great. Go ahead, everyone. All right, I got one. Yep, uh, Richard okay. Harvey joins with a question of his. Just a minute. I'll say really quick too. So we've got a bunch in the chat and then we'll let people kind of go. Maybe if you can also like raise your hand, there's a little option to do that. And um, oh gosh, how do I get back there? Um, so Michael Ann, I'm gonna rely on you to, um, uh, if, if any additional questions need to be shared that are in the chat or whatever, I can't click anywhere. I've got my hands full here. So um, if there, uh, okay. we'll, we'll take questions from the audience, but if you want to interject, just go ahead, okay? Okay, so we'll let, we'll let uh, Richard go, and then I've got um, a few from Genady and from Trevor and from Connie, and we've got okay. about um, 15, 20 minutes to do this, so go ahead, Richard. Okay, so we have about 15 or 20 minutes here uh, left with you, David, and I, I'm now hearing Richard's question and I will relay that to you. Okay. Um, so for everyone who can hear me directly, there's a great sequence in Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy where a cow that is very much looking forward to be butchered because it's been caused to experience the process is intensely pleasurable and also has been made as intelligent as a human comes out and tries to get itself eaten. Um, and it's a really funny sequence and everyone should read Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy again. Um, so question, why not create um, a biosphere where natural processes as they exist now are not merely subverted, but are simply made pleasant or preferable to organisms that are presently victims of suffering because of the natural order. So Richard asks, why not create a biosphere in which um, the things, and I'm already forgetting some of it, but uh, the things that are presently happening to the organisms in the biosphere become pleasurable to these uh, beings instead of, uh, what was the alternative, Richard? 
entirely subverting processes as they exist. Instead of entirely subverting processes as they currently exist. Ooh, well, in one sense, I think the, uh, the possibility, you know, I think that this isn't a biblical text. This is the, uh, the Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, the cow that wants to be eaten. Um, depending on one's uh, 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 value, uh, uh, value scheme, yes, it might be possible to, uh, to re-engineer features such that they did not mind what are naively terrible things happening to them. Um, but nonetheless, yeah, in terms of the actual level of genetic reprogramming involved, uh, the obstacles there would be daunting. And what I've sketched out is, I would see it one or two modest genetic tweaks, but uh, if one is going to have creatures who in some sense can uh, enjoy uh, starving to death uh, or being uh, asphyxiated or, uh, or, or anything like that, this would be a major uh, engineering uh, uh, challenge. Um, well, more than a major engineering challenge. Um, I'm assuming, as my, this is it personally, and this is a personal uh, a view, I would not be bad if, in a sense, the whole, you know, traditional Darwinian life forms, crocodiles, snakes, tigers that have, in a sense, harmed other sentient beings were retired. But most people seem to be uh, quite uh, uh, aghast at the notion of a world without members of the cat family. Uh, and if one wants to preserve a recognizable approximation of so-called charismatic megafauna, I mean, if, 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 if the lion really is to lie down with the, uh, as the lamb, as I, Isaiah foretells, then, uh, yeah, some, gen some, li some genetic tweaking will be needed, or at least, uh, uh, yeah, possibly catnip, <laughs> catnip laced uh, in vitro meat or, or, or something like that. So, uh, yeah, that's not a full answer to the, uh, uh, the question, but, uh, uh, yeah, I wouldn't know where to begin the kind of engineering challenge of uh, arranging cows that want to be eaten. Yeah, thank you very much. So the, I'm, I'm going to share with you that, ironically or, or you know, serendipitously, um, Richard shared the uh, – cow the the anecdote of the cow that wants to be eaten in hitchhiker's guide uh before he asked the question so uh you you guys were both thinking on the exact same wavelength here um i have another question so this comes from Gennady stolarov um and he says given that it's um meat consumption is still highly advisable for health um he says uh Basically, do you, what, do you yeah. think that the widespread advent of lab-grown cruelty-free meat will be the necessary step to convince many people who are not comfortable with veganism or vegetarianism um, to, to basically go for that? Um, do you think that this will be the key component for a society-wide shift toward avoiding the killing of animals for purposes of food consumption? Um, yeah, a couple of points here. First, uh, although uh, a fair number of people are convinced that uh, a meat-based diet is uh, essential to health, I and mean, of course there, there have been entire, or well, there are entire uh, cultures, uh, for example, of the Indian uh, subcontinent that have uh, a vegetarian or even quasi uh, a, a vegan diet. I mean, veg uh, uh, Jains, for example, have been uh, uh, vegetarians for thousands of years. Uh, and here in the West, uh, statistically, uh, vegetarians uh, tend to uh, live longer than meat eaters, uh, tend to be uh, slimmer, record higher IQ score. I mean, essentially, uh, yes. uh, there are a whole bunch of uh, uh, confounding variables. So around 20% of the world's population don't eat meat. Um, there are certainly problems becoming, uh, if one is going to become a strict uh, vegan, if one, you know, people who uh, decide simultaneously to slim or don't trust 
uh, nutritional medicine and therefore uh, admit to take vitamin B12. Um, but, uh, yeah, I'm skeptical that essentially one could close factory farms and slaughterhouses without uh, asking people to adopt a strict uh, vegan diet. But in practice, and I stress the in practice, um, that reason I think we are going to switch to cruelty-free diets this century is, yeah, cultured, cultured meat. Um, that, and candidly, I have a very dark conception of, uh, of, 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 human, of human nature. Uh, any, calling on people to make sacrifices, and many people do regard making a switch to vegetarian or vegan lifestyle as a sacrifice, a lot of people just aren't going to do it. And the most effective way uh, to make the transition to uh, yeah, a cruelty-free lifestyle, to get the, uh, the death factories, factory farms, slaughterhouses uh, closed, is to create a cultured meat uh, of, a, of, a, of a texture huh? and taste that is identical yeah. to that of slaughtered non-human animals. Uh, now, cultured meat could be genetically engineered, but given the level of uh, anxiety this triggers, it's, it's probably far better to stress that it is uh, at, uh, that it is that it's natural. That it that it's natural. It doesn't need to be genetic, it's genetically engineered at all. Uh, and indeed, if uh, the uh, uh, powers that be uh, had uh, invested uh, resources in developing and commercializing uh, uh, cultured meat. Uh, yes, this terrible plague uh, now uh, upon us uh, would not have uh, occurred, uh, quite aside from the horrendous costs in terms of human uh, 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 suffering, the, uh, the economic costs are going to run to uh, uh, perhaps 10, 10, well, I don't know, 8, 10, 12, 14 trillion dollars, astronomical amounts. So it, it, it is to the benefit of humans and non-human animals alike if we get rid of the obscenity of factory farming and slaughterhouses. Uh, and uh, so, yes, I, I, I very much uh, hope that all you know, people of, of goodwill, basic decency, will, will support this uh, 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 a, a transition to cruelty-free diet. Uh, thank you. So, um, because we only have time for one or two more questions, uh, what we're going to ask the, everyone to do is to post additional questions that they have um, in the campfire. And um, I can't guarantee because of the technical difficulties that we are, are experiencing that David will be able to stay on the entire conference, but we will make sure that we relay these questions to him and uh, get his uh, delayed responses. Um, David, we'd love to have you stay on if you can figure out uh, what's going on with your um, your audio, but if it, we totally understand if, uh, the conference experience isn't sufficiently blissful for you. Um, oh, not at all. I'm just, uh, I'm impressed at how we, this is it. The slightest technical challenge or hiccup in life, I tend to go to pieces. I'm impressed at how you, <laughs> you take these things in your stride. Um, no, it's more a case of uh, apologies to, to anyone who's been uh, frustrated because they want to uh, yeah, offer uh, criticisms uh, uh, and yeah, I haven't yet been able to do so, but yeah, essentially, uh, I'm around, as you probably gathered, uh, uh, like most people, I'm not uh, out, out and about and so on, so yeah, anyone with uh, questions and criticisms, I'd be delighted to, uh, yeah, fit me in at, uh, at, at, at any slot that's uh, convenient, so um, <laughs> yeah. Excellent. So what we'll do then is, um, as, as we receive questions uh, for you, we, we'll just, um, I mean, would it, would it be all right if we shared your email as well with the audience? Absolutely, yes. Okay. Yeah, this is, uh, 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 anyone, as I said, the, uh, anyone who isn't uh, totally aghast at, at, the, uh, <laughs> at, the, at what I've been talking about, yeah, the, the, the PDF contains some, uh, 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 some links. My email, davidheadweb.com. Headweb was the uh, original motherload site back in uh, 1996. 
the time. Uh, yeah, I said that. Like, you know, the hedonist, the comparative, in spite of its debauched title, essentially, <laughs> like, used biotech to, to phase out suffering throughout the living world. Excellent. Um, okay, so uh, we will share both the PDF and your email, but in the meantime, we've got time for one more question. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and ask this one uh, from Jeremy Hadfield. He says, what is suffering? Or to state the question more technically, how do you know if the mental state of a sentient being other than yourself is suffering? Understanding what suffering is seems to be a prerequisite for negative utilitarianism's project of reducing suffering, but I don't think there is str a strong technical definition. How do you determine if you have reduced the suffering of a non-human animal with any epistemic confidence? Um, oh, good heavens. Well, this, you know, a full answer would take a philosophical disposition. I mean, but take, uh, take you know, the, something like redness. Now, I can't define redness to someone who is congenitally colorblind. Uh, uh, redness has nothing intrinsically to do with particular wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation. I mean, yeah, I want to have some experiences of, uh, of, of redness while dreaming and, and, and so forth. Um, what we're not dealing with here is how to overcome the problem of, of radical skepticism. I think in principle it is possible to overcome uh, the problem of radical skepticism. Uh, the uh, uh, the so-called, uh, not so-called, uh, the Hogan sisters, uh, conjoined twins, actually share a thalamic bridge and can in some sense actually experience and feel and see uh, each other's perspective. And in future, it will be possible uh, to uh, engineer reversible thalamic bridges so one could do the equivalent of a Vulcan mind meld with with fellow humans or indeed uh, non-human animals, but uh, until we reach uh, that uh, uh, that point in our development, um, I would appeal essentially to principle of the uniformity uh, of nature, uh, and that uh, yeah, uh, that when I have uh, you know uh, you know extremely unpleasant uh, experience as a result of uh, noxious. Uh, 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 stimuli, how do I know that you or a non-human animal uh, experiences something similar? If one looks at the, uh, the neurology, the, the, the genetics, uh, the, uh, uh, the particular structures, the neurotransmitter systems, the behavioral responses, there is an extraordinary convergence that the neurotransmitter systems uh, involved in processing uh, uh, noxious stimuli are very strongly conserved over hundreds of millions of years. So, sure, I can't know right now that you are experiencing a pleasure or color and so on, but short of radical skepticism, it's an inference to the best explanation. 